Hi hey everyone, welcome to my latest behind the scenes at a London wedding which was in June. Uh, for this I shot hybrid which is shooting both photo and video as one person. It sounds uh, pretty mental but it's actually quite fun. Uh, here's a video clip at 50% speed with my LUT on and then here's the resulting photo. So as I said before, I shoot hybrid, both photo and video, as one person, but for this video I'm only really going to be including all the photos, I feel like if I show you all the video clips as well it's just going to be a ridiculously long video and no one will really care about it. So here we go, we start off with flat lay, so flat lays are something I'm not really too confident about and obviously it shows, so uh, I found this jumper just hanging off a chair and thought yeah that'd be quite nice. Uh, so it pops it on this air conditioning unit. Usually I get wide and then I just zoom in to each individual item and get a nice shot. Never really know what to do about earrings and boxes, so I just give it a little wiggle. Camera settings, I normally just shoot totally wide open literally all day. Um, at 1.8, I'm using the 35mm 1.8S lens and the 85mm 1.8S lens from Nikon. But lately, I have actually got rid of my 35 and I've opted it for a 24 instead, so I will let you know how I get on. Not everyone likes fat lays, uh, not everyone expects you to take photos of invitations and stuff but it's really good to like just contact the couple before and just say um, yeah see you at 10 o'clock in the morning oh by the way could you leave like some jewelry out on the side or something or in a little bag for me uh, along with like maybe an invitation or something just to take photos of it and then they'll be more than happy to sort you out dress photos I don't really do dress photos I do dress photos really if, if you like um, there's a nice place to hang it inside or outside but Sadly today there wasn't really anywhere to hang it. So today is a wedding um, which isn't all in one location which is quite cool. So this morning we're starting off this hotel and in, near Notting Hill and then I'm going to get a short cab journey over to the church which is right by Abbey Road where the uh, Beatles did their famous um, walking across the road shot. So maybe we'll get a shot like that later today and then it's just to a pub around the corner from the church. Weddings like this are my favourite though. Um, I love pubs just in general and I feel like it's kind of like a brilliant vibe all around as opposed to having like a copy and paste wedding if that makes any sense to you. So my methods really on the day is just to float around. I don't really like drawing attention to myself. Um, I mean I'm quite tall, I'm six foot six so it's quite hard to stay invisible so um, yeah, that, it's just something I try and do. I try and like make people like kind of cool that I'm there. Here, Becky's reading a letter from her husband to be. Always shoot. So whenever I'm taking photos, when I feel like I need to stop taking photos, I will still take photos because of you never know what you're gonna miss. You can't recreate a moment. And uh, just quickly grab the card for a quick photo. There's, it's quite important to you know take photos of things which mean things to people so if you're not sure just ask because of you'll regret not asking if it comes up during the, uh, later in the day uh, when they ask if you've got a certain photo of something so quite mixed white balance in this room it's not too bad really I mean I could use flash to overpower everything but I don't really like using flash so um, I just neutralized all the yellow colors in post-production and I have a little flat lay uh, that's a really nice uh, poem that my mother read during the ceremony I just saw it on the side and thought oh, I'll do another one quickly So with a timeline in the morning, I recommend if you 
Um, I mean, most weddings are kind of pressed for time. This wasn't, luckily, which was quite nice. Uh, but I do recommend uh, the bride and the groom get get ready before everyone else. So if there's a queue for a makeup artist or a hairdresser, the bride's done. So we don't have to worry about that. And if people get a little bit stressed later on because they're not ready, it's not going to be the bride or the groom. It's going to be a bridesmaid, and you know they they can sort themselves out. They're not the they're not the star of the day. Quick selfie here. Why not, eh? So I'm constantly on the lookout for things happening. So they are playing with the dress. So I asked them to take off the cover because if I'm not quite, I'm not that confident, you know, with dresses, and I never really want to damage the dress. And obviously, if I'd be moving the dress around, I'll be getting the blame. So if you ever need to move the dress, just ask the bridesmaids to help you, and they'll be more than happy to help. Shooting through mirrors is my safe space, so to speak. So, you know, it's, it's quite hard to get decent photos of people um, when they're getting ready, when there's not a mirror. Um, so, yeah, love it. So, luckily, the grooms and his groomsmen are getting married in another room in the same hotel. So. I went and popped up to see introduce myself and see him. Uh, got some banging photos quite quickly, to be honest. Small room, but luckily, you know, mirrors are everywhere, so I always be shooting through a mirror. So you can see my hand there, it's just in the frame. So then I just take a little step to the left and get rid of that. So here I'm just trying to, you know, join in with a bit of the conversation, not really, you know, drawing attention to myself so people are more comfortable with the camera. Here Toby's just getting ready, um, the last steps are putting his shoes on and stuff, so I'm there taking snaps. Some photos just call for black and white to be fair, so that was an ideal one. I feel like it's quite easy getting like great shots of grooms because of you know you can just get them to touch their suits and adjust their watches and things like that or put each other's ties on oh yeah like <laughs> like what's happening here there's uh, restrictions in place in England when this was being filmed so masks are required in public areas uh, so guys went out for a quick sig it's quite hot in the hotel so it's quite nice to get outside to be fair Quick shot in front of some uh, bins. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm quite happy having them standing in front of like a, a couple of bins and uh, in full sun because it was quite sunny and I feel like shade's more important. Okay, so down in reception area, there's this amazing table with the chandelier above. So I, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, right, I need to go and grab the shoes. So yeah, went and grabbed the shoes. Tables, like reflective tables, are always a hit with photos, with me anyway. I always forget to do many portrait orientation photos, so back up to the uh, ladies now. Uh, the uh, bride's getting her makeup done. Um, I love, I absolutely adore this makeup artist. She's great because of normally when i come to weddings like it's typical england is like you know the light's not particularly good inside so they use ring lights and things but i'm so happy that she was making use like the natural light by the window makes for some much better photo so here um i normally um say to the bride when she wants to get ready in her dress i'll come back in like 10 15 minutes and i'll come back up for the last moments um, because it's always good to have you know, the, the last moments of her getting her dress uh, captured on photo and video. Also, you never want the bride to get stressed at all, uh, but she wasn't stressed at all. Um, and I think it's partly because of all her bridesmaids were helping her out with, which is great. Always capture the father of the bride, seeing the bride for the first time. It's around probably this time if I had a second shooter I'd have them focusing on the bride's face always capture the moments of tears and things being caught a 
Okay, here. No, I think she's just realised, Becky's just realised how heavy her bouquet is going to be. Um, I've, I've, quite a lot of people don't realise how heavy bouquets can be. And like when I first held one, I was like, oh my god. So here, like, not an obvious great moment, but if you take photos continuously, you'll always get bangers. I always like taking photos of people taking photos, which is kind of inceptiony. Nice window light coming through there on her face. Looking banging. Okay, after a, a quick taxi journey through Beatles territory, uh, where Paul McCartney lives and other famous people, um, I'm straight back into the church. So when I arrived to the church, um, guests are already there. We've got a live stream going on the tripod. Thought it'd be quite cool to take a photo of that. I was quite wary of this. Of I'm quite wary of church weddings because you never really know what to expect um, because they can be really dark and um, like really weird colours going on with the lights and stuff. But luckily, this church is absolutely beautiful, and we had a string quartet as well who are so good and so talented. And the vicar. So vicars and like vicars are quite. In my experience, they're quite difficult to work with, but she was an absolute star, and I'm so glad I've had this opportunity to actually shoot a church wedding I loved, because of it hasn't put me. So now, when I get you know invited to a church wedding, I'm not going to automatically dread it because of sometimes like you know vicars and things can be quite unreasonable, and they can be like, "Hello, photographer. Yeah, no, just one rule. That one rule is no photos, and or you've got to stand at the back and." They glare at you and they yell at you and yeah, so she's an absolute star. Okay, so Groom and his best man waiting down the bottom of the aisle. Cheeky grin. Vicar giving him a pep talk. Legend. So I don't really use black and white photo, black and white like that much, but I feel like when I do, like it, it suits. Sometimes an image just calls for black and white. It's the uh, bride arriving in a classic black cab. You get a couple of shots of the bridesmaids while waiting for her. So it's important to um, when the bride arrives, if she's you know inside the car I I made the mistake of one wedding going up and opening the door and I felt like oh god I'm gonna shut it again on her and said sorry because of it was you know it's kind of the, the father's job to open open the car so uh, like lately I don't go anywhere near the car really I just get a nice wide shot of them coming out just in case they uh, they open the door and let themselves out and ruins the photo so yeah, everyone's in positive spirits buzzing and the uh, vicar's giving everyone a lovely little pep talk and then we go back for a prayer. That light is so good. That's why I love shade so much. But yeah, quick prayer from the vicar. So occasionally you'll see my behind the scenes camera uh, go weird and go on my legs. It's because I'm using my other camera um, on a different focal length for that time so I apologize for that maybe one day I'll get I'll treat myself to another GoPro so I can have a GoPro on each camera but until then uh, you'll just have to deal with the occasional missed video clip okay Vic is now coming down so he's realizing he's about to get married and see her for the first time so that's always really good to get the groom's anticipation and now I'm quickly legging it, running back. So I try, like, there's always like the odd floorboard, which is very, very loud. So I kind of like scope it out beforehand to see what's loud and what's not, because obviously I don't want to move around the church and be really loud and obvious, because uh, that's part of the reason most vicars do not like photographers. She's buzzing. She is one of my favorite human beings. So here, just getting shots of the bridesmaids walking in. The 
the stabilization of the GoPro Hero 8. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's so good. Look at my lens moving around. But the GoPro is so steady. Okay, so here I'm kind of like ducking down a little bit so people can actually see them walk in because I feel like it's quite important to be like kind of you know considerate to other guests who you know want to see this, um, these coming into the church. So now I kind of really gently <laughs> manoeuvre myself back to the front to capture Toby seeing his wife for the first time. And I'm constantly clicking as well, I don't want to miss a moment. Buzzing. I mean, this is like the reason I do weddings as well, because it's I like not having a nine to five job and stuff, and it go just spending my time at weddings, seeing people actually want to get married and who love and crazy about each other, and seeing these moments like it just makes me feel warm and happy. So that's basically why I'm a wedding photographer, really. So settings wise, quite a lot of people big up manual. I mean, I shoot really in aperture priority auto ISO all day apart from if I'm in an environment like this because it's a bit dark so I mean I only shoot manual because of when I flip over to video mode I want at least 50 um, I want at least like a hundred of a shutter speed one, one over 100 shutter speed for video because I shoot in uh, 50 FPS and if I shot in um, aperture priority that would override both photo and video so I, I just shoot manual inside um, if I'm doing both photo and video but otherwise like I feel like it's not that important I think it's important to learn manual obviously but it's typically like if you're in an environment like this and it's really dark I mean it doesn't really show how like dark it is in the GoPro but if you don't raise your ISO ISO like high enough then the shadows are just gonna be full of disgusting noise of what the camera just like invents really and sometimes you're boosting in post anyway and yeah it, it's grainy and you know not very nice so I lit <laughs> I mean the ISO I'd be comfortable with going up I shot a wedding last week outdoors at four o'clock in the dark in December and I was shooting a ceremony at ISO 8000 and that was totally fine so never be scared to use your ISO because of it's there so here I'm just walking around ever so quietly and they're having a nice song played by the string quartet. Always get good photos of suppliers. So obviously like these guys have been paid by the couple to play during the ceremony, but I mean they've got social media. Um, I've sent them photos and they can tag me if they like. I don't really, you know, I, I'm not like a strict person where if you use my photos, I'm gonna sue you if you don't tag me and stuff. It's it's good to make friends in the industry. It's good to, you know, if someone ever, if someone asks me, oh yeah, we want a string quartet, I'll be like, yeah, I know, the, I know the people, like, because they're brilliant. So here, like, obviously I'm shooting video as well, so you can't really see, like, the video I'm taking um, because if I'm not really including it in this video but that's why like there's not hundreds of photos of this ceremony uh, getting the rings on now when they're exchanging rings it's very important to actually capture it going on to the uh, finger so with vowels and things obviously it's important to get in video if you're doing video but if you're doing pho photography um, it's always good to like just get other people's reactions and stuff like that now I'm not actually sure what this is called I know we do it in England I'm not sure if we do it worldwide but if you want to let me know then that's great but it's something about binding the hands together and the rings and the, the symbol of a ring never ending like a circle I, I guess I should probably know about that and here's the first kiss so first kisses you want to get as many shots as possible so I 
I literally just hold my finger down and make sure it's in focus first of all because of the last thing you want is a first kiss out of focus and then obviously afterwards like that black and white photo perfect photo just gazing into each other's eyes so here like obviously I love getting photos of people hugging which might sound a bit strange but I mean you know that more often than not hugs are quite emotional and it's good to like get photos of them So here, um, the signing of the register. So and in here, we've you know, got to sign the register. You're not supposed to take photos of them actually signing it uh, for legal reasons or something. Um, so yeah, it's always good to just stand back a bit and just wait until you're told that you can take a photo. Yeah, there's always good candid moments around. Everyone's you know, buzzing that they've finally got married. So yeah, just watch out for them smiles and things. I actually use the Nikon Eye Autofocus. Uh, quite a lot of people don't trust it, but I trust it pretty much 95% of the day, 99% of the day. Um, I do have my Function 1 button uh, set to subject tracking, so if it does get it wrong, I can just click that, and then I've got a box there straight away to uh, override it. Okay, lighting the candles. Candles make for awesome photos. <laughs> I love how the pick is holding the bouquet as well. That is, uh, that she's a team player. Okay, so now in churches, we, we normally go to the back of the church for like prayers, and it's quite hard to like get photos of it because if you typically can't get around to the side of them, but luckily today. She as she's so awesome. She's actually letting me allowed to go down with them. Um, other churches they won't let you anywhere near it, and yeah, they'll be, they typically do the first kiss down here as well. So you know, if you you're not if you haven't got like a 70 to 200 lens, you're out of luck. So I'm being ever so quiet. I do not want to you know as accommodating as she is. You know, I, you never really know. So. I don't want people to, you know, draw their attention to me. I want everyone's attention to be on the bride and groom. Always take photos and keep taking photos. So, you know, I had Toby smiling at Becky then, and then I just kept doing it, and then he had that cool grin. So, that's a banging photo. I love it. <laughs> Multitasking at its finest with the uh, 35. Okay, so now I know that the prayers at the end are probably going to be over in a minute. Uh, that's just from experience. I'm, I'm doing church weddings. So I come here quickly to get like a nice shot from behind. I don't really like standing in the way of people's views as well. So it's always good to just you know, stand directly in the middle. now the string quartet starts and I know they're gonna go out to, to a song and I presume it's gonna be this one because it's a pretty funky song so yeah I've just got a bouquet back so I'm gonna get ready to basically run <laughs> quickly to switch around turn around in case you can get a good photo but as like obviously I want to get to the back without getting in the way of people I'm gonna have to quickly move Okay, that was a nice video clip. Now I'm running down the side. And it doesn't really matter about being quiet now because everyone's cheering and clapping, so. Okay, so here, you can't see it because I'm on my other lens. But yeah, like, when the couple are walking towards you, sometimes they look down or, you know, they'll, they'll look happy, but, they, you know, you want them to be ecstatic so you can hump them up and go, yeah, you're married. Which is why, like, you know, when they were holding up, Toby holding up his ring was just awesome, awesome photo. Okay, so then I'm following them outside, and then um, they they have to go around to the side of the church now and go into the side of the side of the church, so the guests don't see. It, so they can come back out to the guests, if that makes sense. And uh, <laughs> I just quickly shouted, "Yeah, you're married!" And yeah, they're buzzing, so good. 
So I mean, uh, as much as I love like, you know, candid and unposed photography, that was candid and unposed and, you know, you kind of gesture people into it occasionally. Like, you know, they were just walking around having a conversation like, oh yeah, we're married, brilliant. But I was like, yay, yeah, oi guys, look at me, you're married. And it kind of, you know, gets them into the mood, gets them into the zone. Uh, you want to create moments. You want to capture moments as well as create them, really. Here, I mean, unposed, looking fantastic. Like, people people don't normally like their photo taken on a wedding day. They kind of, like, change and, and like, they kind of just, you know, get used to it, really. So it's really important to get as many photos of guests as possible and you never know like it, I mean I, I feel like I'm quite good at gauging who's really close family and who's close friends and things but normally I take like 5,000 6,000 photos at a wedding day and um, it's because of you know I when I'm when I'm editing and culling and I want to look through and make sure I've got photos of like important people and having more photos like this is best really obviously here there's an annoying ramp and they are waiting for the couple to come out for a confetti shot and I totally just like did not notice this ramp and it would have been really good had I noticed it and uh, got rid of that ramp on the steps as you'll see in a minute but yeah in here a uh, little quick pep talk with the couple about the confetti shot uh, confetti I like them coming out and then maybe stopping halfway when they like confetti is like there's more confetti and um, just having a little pose or a kiss or a dip and that kind of like you know if you're kind of educating your couple before they come through the confetti because obviously they don't know what to expect so yeah always remind them to like have a kiss or a dip and stuff like that and if there's any leftover confetti make sure people throw it okay back to candids now So normally like well, I mean today after this church I thought like you know it'd be good to have confetti and people can just you know have a chat for like five ten minutes um, before we do any kind of like staged photos like the group photos because of it's good to like actually people spend time together and obviously if we went out straight away to do group photos people would be more well they'll be like less inclined to like want to do them um, personally I think group photos are a necessary evil but then again I do love them um, it depends I mean I've I know people who have done wedding photographers who have been told like a, a group of 48 group photo combinations and that simply is just not doable on a wedding day and I love uh, this is a video clip from the Nikon Z6 of a uh, Toby just grinning there just had to include it quite <laughs> quite a good video <laughs> Okay, so I love shooting between people so if there's a group of people just chatting shoot between people I mean as I said before like I shoot my 85 and 35 normally I'll get like a wide my 35 and then just go in on the 85 wide open lovely stuff saying that I feel like in the future with my 24 um, I'm gonna start shooting in like different apertures because of you know i i, I kind of want to i've seen like some wedding photographers just shoot at f8 and i feel like some of them images like really tell something about the day and like story tell so i might go like f 1.8 and then suddenly to f8 on moments uh, in the future um, or maybe i'll do a video about that but so future plans with uh, behind the scenes videos i've actually got quite a few weddings behind the scenes like recorded so I will be editing them when I can. I've just got a tiny, tiny, tiny little backlog of uh, hybrid videos. Um, but here, obviously, you need to take as many photos of people as possible, banging photos, of close family members and friends, smiling and stuff. Um, I've had a few weddings booked off people who have been, you know, um, wedding guests, uh, especially for my earlier weddings. I've had, like, one wedding in particular had five couples at, and they've all... <laughs> They either got married and booked me or are going to get married and are, are messaging me wanting me to be their photographer which is absolutely fantastic so yeah and you never know like some of these photos of uh, guests like 
I know some people who you who have used some of my photos for like their Tinder profile pictures and stuff. And it's kind of cool, like if I actually kind of create a couple from them Tinder photos, and then maybe I can be their wedding photographer in the future. Okay, here just walking around really framing things um, because obviously you know we've been outside for like five minutes now uh, just see what else I can get really here always be on the lookout for a bridesmaid helping hand like she's obviously helping with the veil so I thought you know get a photo of that because of just in case the bride doesn't notice and appreciate it So a few people are off, off now. Uh, some people can't make it to the pub uh, or reception. So um, yeah, I always get banging photos of people like saying goodbye to the bride and groom. Okay, here, so quick group photos down the side of the church. Um, guys are pretty easy to take photos of. Um, I feel like, you know, guys just typically pose themselves. Uh, with Toby here, like, I just asked him to stand there, put his hand in his pocket, just look out like oh, behind me and stuff. And it, it's kind of like effortless style really with most guys yeah play with your cuff links is a good one as well so okay, here so a nice door around the side of the church so I'll post Becky there for the bridesmaids to help um, it's quite nice and symmetrical there quite nice shaded light and obviously you know she's buzzing she's got married to an amazing guy so she's gonna be posing herself really nicely I just ask, you know, um, make sure your flowers aren't too high. I mean, you know, they're perfect. Always good to get a couple of portrait orientation photos as well. I love how the wind's catching the veil there. Okay, with bridesmaids, sometimes like bridesmaids, um, you know, they pose themselves nicely and sometimes they're not like uh, close together enough. But that kind of works when you just ask them to be silly. So they're like, oh, just pretend I, tell them, pretend I told a really funny joke or something. Or, you know, they'll, they'll always, you know, just have a little laugh together. So here, propose Becky exactly the same pace as but Toby. I think that's quite a cool place to go. Really nice and shaded. Obviously, I don't want to mess around with the dress, so the bridesmaids are around, get them to move around, make, make sure the, the dress is, you know, how it's supposed to look like. I mean, I, I'm not like a wedding dress expert, so I'm not really, know, I don't really know how it's supposed to look on the ground, so if the girls are around, they can uh, help out. Shots of bouquets, I love flower shots like this, um, just focusing like maybe at the back of the flowers and then like a shot at the front. Here, my legs and a bin <laughs> using a different lens uh, so yeah I mean here it's always good to you know get a bit closer with like a 35 or 24 get a bit closer and you know capture those details so that's with an 85 millimeter capture those details of, of things like especially earrings and things like that. you never know like what's important to people so you need to like take as many photos of details as possible here this kind of reminds me of, like a a David Beckham and posh spice <laughs> photo <laughs> for some reason uh, but yeah they're, they're buzzing buzzing cut Toby's hair off but I don't think he's mad about that okay one last photo and then um, <laughs> Toby showing off his ring I mean, um, always get like shots of like close family members as well and stuff because uh, they'll treasure them photos. Uh, nice group photo so outside the church, but um, yeah, no, no one really likes a group photo. But I mean, you know, it's good to have it. I mean, yeah, like my parents' old wedding album from like 30 years ago is literally just group photos. Um, I think obviously like technology has come along a way to enable people to get like candid moments and stuff. So yeah, loving that shot. Capturing the hugs, always on the ball with the hugs. So, with recording this video, well, editing it, um, I just 
you know, drag the clips into my timeline. I didn't really realise that it wasn't dragging the audio as well. So if you do want the audio, don't fret. I am going to include the audio uh, from my GoPros in like future videos, uh, just so you can see, like you know, the noises and how I how I act and how like a uh, might gesture couples into doing what I want them to do, which it isn't you know particularly hard or, or it's it's pretty obvious. But yeah, I'll include it. So here we go back into the church because of why the hell not. So normally I get couples to stand like a foot and a half apart, hold hands, look at each other, then look at me, and uh, just go for a walk. And then just hold the finger down on your shutter button because you never know what's going to happen. God, looking at this is making me quite dizzy, I do apologise. Yeah, the classic walking shot. Um, I feel like it's you know it's quite it's easier to get a good photo of people walking. So always try that out. I mean, walking into the window light there, lovely light. We have a last por por ugh, a last portrait orientation photo for the old Insta. there I just hold the shutter button down and wait for them to do something I didn't ask them to kiss but you know in the moment they thought why not okay so now we're gonna walk to the pub so I suggested if we walk around this side of the church and um, a family member just took a photo of them in front of that exact same spot so I thought I'd get a couple of snaps here okay so the pub is literally about 200 meters walk away so I thought it'd be quite cool to just all go for a walk to the pub together so I thought if I cross the road first I can capture you know moments and stuff and you never know what's gonna happen you, you know you might get a, a random Ferrari go past and it might look pretty cool or <laughs> I think she just tripped up there The amount of people who are like beeping their horns and saying congratulations and stuff, it all helps like add to the experience really. I mean they wouldn't have had it, had they got to the, just a, a taxi to the pub they wouldn't have had like the same experience of like people going yeah congratulations and stuff like that, it's all brilliant. Okay, so right around the corner from here is the Abbey Road crossing where the Beatles crossed, but um, it had roadworks on. So we settled for here in the middle of the road. It looks like we're in the middle of the road in a dangerous position, but we're not. We're on a, you know, with them crossing things, but yeah. Here's just literally 30 seconds from the pub. Um, the, they actually told me about this like a few weeks before the wedding and um, because they went for a walk around there. And when they told me about it, I was like, yes, we need to go here. So here, just get a couple of photos together in the middle, arm around each other, standing next to each other. Um, they're so good, they just, you know, smile. Okay, so I am in the pub now, so I make sure to go up first before they do. And I'm on a different lens, so I do apologize for not being prepared and having the GoPro on the correct camera. But yeah, uh, capturing them walking into the pub, everyone's screaming and going, woo! Um, yeah, it's important to capture that. So what a function room, it's a really nice, really nice pub, but upstairs is like one whole like entire like rentable space. And um, yeah, it was really, really cool, really homely, um, had like really, really nice lights there. So I was really looking forward to like the evening. So really, really bright window behind the top table. Um, normally like that would create a problem. Um, but it didn't today because uh, the, the light was wasn't too bad Okay, so cakes Cake shots are a necessary evil. Um, I do not like taking photos of cakes. Um, I like taking photos of toppers and uh, little details of the cake, but not like a cake as a whole um, Maybe that's that's something we'll change in the future 
Um, this is cool, like this guest book with uh, the pegs for those little private messages. Always get photos of things couples have spent money on because of, it's, it's going to be important for them. Nice flowers. The detail of this cake is just insane. And come to think of it, I don't think I even ate any. Um, I feel like <laughs> when I leave weddings, I always, oh, in the car home or in the train home, I always think like, oh, I'm a bit hungry now. And then realise that, oh, I didn't take the cake, which was an offer. And yeah, these are really cool, really nice, simple idea. Free up the bar staff. I think like if every wedding had this, it would be a hit. Virgin Mojito, like who doesn't like that? Not everyone wants alcohol on a wedding day, especially me if I'm shooting. Um, then I'd normally drink like between like six, eight liters of water a wedding, um, purely because of the wedding hangover the next day from being so dehydrated is crazy. Uh, you don't really realize how little water you actually drink during a wedding day. And yeah, so, Always drink as much water as you possibly can. I carry like a 2.2 litre uh, bottle uh, with me. I do get a couple of looks, but I'll have the last laugh by not having a wedding hangover. Um, oh, I've just realised that's the avenue the pub was on. It's called the El Elgin Avenue and the pub's called the Elgin. So that's just occurred to me. A couple of detail shots in the pub. Really funky, cool designs get some nice candids I don't really like taking photos of people like eating um, but I mean if it's just like nibbles or something that's that's totally fine I think lovely candid moment of them kissing they weren't aware of it nice moments I mean I am six foot six and I would have thought you know people would be a bit more, you know, oh my god, James is staying right next to us and wouldn't really be themselves, but apparently people get along with me, so that's all right, not gonna complain with that. Shooting people with that 85 millimeter, cutting out all the rubbish around all the clutter and focusing on their faces. Nice picture. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is like the hardest part of creating a behind the scenes video is just talking over it. This guy's a legend. So, I mean, I'm not obviously, I'm obviously not including like every photo I take, um, but I'm showing you a good portion of like the variety of photos you can take. Um, and I absolutely adore this idea. I think people need to do this more at weddings. Definitely. Okay, so speech is time. Obviously, I'm doing photo and video as one person. So I am the majority, the majority of what I do now is really video because if I want to capture like the best parts of the speech and it's quite hard to capture the best parts of the speech if I don't actually record any video. So yeah, I, I, I take the occasional photo, but the main chunk of it really is the video clips. Um, if you want to check out their highlight, hybrid highlight video, by the way, if you just click up on the uh, top left, it'll, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see the results so speeches really um, I feel like the best photos really to be taken from speeches are like people smiling and people with, like reactions and stuff like that really obviously shooting a lot of video now so not many photos speeches from the heart are so good and I mean sometimes when people like bring out a piece of paper you're like oh god it's gonna be really long but Toby's speech was brilliant spot on yeah just positioning myself a little bit better it's hard to be in like such a, it's not really that a small room but because of there's nowhere to walk down the sides it kind of like challenges me when I'm taking photos and filming speeches the best environment really for speeches would be outdoors. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, after the group speech, always be on the lookout for a kiss, because it's going to happen. Okay, quick best man speech here. Nice, straight to the point from the heart. And um, yeah, <laughs> legend. When people... Looks like he was quite relieved for it to be over, but he did really well, so... Um, <laughs> yeah, a couple of candies from people. Uh, just smiling, laughing, having a good time. Now, um, I would... I'm always on the lookout for people who are having their photo taken. Uh, so here, you know, they're having their photo taken, so I take their photo as well. Just a uh, yeah, kind of little moment there. Cake cutting, cake cutting, pretty straightforward. I hold a knife together and look at each other, look at me, and um, have a laugh. If you want to fit, like normally, I, ask, I tell couples if you want to feed each other cake, you're more than welcome to. And sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, here I'm using bounce flash, so I'm dialing in the ambient light, and I'm bouncing my flash off, um, you know, to, behind me and slightly to the right, and I'm like balancing it out in post. I love myself a first dance, especially with lights with the ambient light in the background. Uh, fantastic. But yeah, that's all for me today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Feel free to give us a subscribe and a like, share and all sorts of that. Thank you very much for sticking around.